Jesus will demand accountability for the souls entrusted to our care. I want to tell you that I have been a little afraid to say all this because it's not easy to come and tell you all these things. But it is necessary for you to hear and understand the voice of God. This century and this generation is more perverse than the generation of Sodom and Gomorrah. Brothers, at this moment, it is a blessing to share with you an experience in which the Lord has delivered to me for His people. This time I want to emphasize I'm not looking for fame. I'm not looking for greatness. I only seek to exalt the name of the Lord Jesus. My name is Cesar Sandoval. I'm going to share with you an experience the Lord gave me on the 27th of August 2020. It is a very strong experience for His people. In the name of Jesus, I was praying in the presence of the Lord at about 3 a.m. in the morning, when the Lord surprised me. I started to see something very spectacular. I began to see the spiritual world which the Lord allowed me to see at that moment. I saw that I was on my knees in the living room, where a beam of light was entering and coming towards me. It was a very bright single light. Quickly, I saw that there was no longer a single light. I saw two characters in the beam of light. And inside that ball full of light, I was overwhelmed to see two beings of light. I observed this very bright light that was in motion descending to the living room. At that moment, these two characters addressed me in a single voice. I've never seen anything like that. The Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit were in the light in front of me. The Lord addressed me with His surprising voice that was like many waters. The Lord's voice roared like thunder and lightning. I thought I would be destroyed by the tremendous voice of the Lord, which was explosive and at the same time full of tenderness. In thunderous voice, the Lord said to me, Caesar, unworthy and useless servant. What are you doing for me there on earth? I have shown you experiences like this. These encounters do not mean that you already have the salvation. I thought I was going to be destroyed by the explosive and roaring voice of the Lord that was addressing me. I was a hypocrite and unprofitable servant. I was then kneeling and prostrating on the ground and crying. I couldn't do anything except cry. When I wanted to look at the Lord and the Holy Spirit, they were there united in a single glowing ball of light that was bright. The Holy Spirit and the Lord Jesus who were inside that ball of light, changed their speech to a different tone. They spoke initially like thunder, and I thought I was going to be destroyed. Then they spoke with a tone of tenderness. They told me, we are going to show you one more experience so that you go and tell the world everything. The world must understand that no one can mock God. And the Lord said to me, now get up from the ground, unworthy servant. You will tell the world, what we are going to tell you. At the moment, I felt very bad. I started to observe the Lord's feet with His very beautiful sandals. And I saw the feet of the Lord with holes, how He was pierced, and His feet were resplendent. And I said, Certainly this is the Lamb of God that was slain. He is here in front of me telling me mysteries. The Bible says in Jeremiah 33, 3 Call to me, and I will answer you, and show you great and mighty things, which you know not. Quickly, the Lamb of God removed my garment that was stained in black. I want to tell you that I recently felt that just because I had two experiences with the Lord, I don't need to go to church and congregate with the brothers. I thought I did not need to pray and fast because I am saved. I was carried away for the Lord has shown me heaven and hell in the spirit world. I want to tell you, brother, this was the biggest deception. I was saying, the Lord had shown me heaven and hell, the judgments of God coming to earth, I'm already saved because of these encounters. That was the biggest mistake that man can tell himself. Brother, the word of God says without faith, it is impossible to please the Lord. And we have to repent and become holy so we can see the Lord. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. The Lord removed my stained garment that was already black, and He began to clean it with the blood of the Lamb of God. I began to see that my stain in black garment was made clean and started shining and was made beautiful again. Immediately my face began to change from sadness to golden and happy countenance. The King of Kings and Lord of Lords was in front of me and He told me, I have forgiven your sins. I was crying when my countenance became like the countenance of the Lord. I cried with joy and I became cheerful. I was changed with a beautiful countenance of the Lord. It was something extraordinary. The Lord told me, this white garment is going to take you to heaven. Without holiness, no one will see me. That was one of the most blunt warnings to the church. Tell my people that I am coming soon. Tell my people to be prepared because I am coming shortly. 
Go and tell my people that the trumpet is already about to sound and that soon they will depart from this place. Go and tell my people that I am the one that I am and that there is no other than me. They will not rise if they are crying out in their heart for earthly things that are vanity of vanities. Tell my people to just set their eyes on me. I am the author and finisher of their faith. All the things that I have prepared for them are eternal. I have prepared eternity for a holy people. I was abounding with joy and happiness in an extraordinary way. My heart felt joy, peace, and calm. I saw that I went from a stained black garment into a shining garment. I want to tell you that if your life is like this, today, you can come to the feet of Christ. Jesus is the Lord. The Lord told me, let's go because we are going to show you things. I moved with a glowing ball of bright light that covered the Lord and the Holy Spirit. I could not see the face of the Lord, I only heard his voice of thunder and lightning that was also sweet. Quickly we entered a region of light in heaven, where I observed an intense and very bright light. When we entered the bright light of heaven, I saw so many chairs and many tables. I looked and saw that things were well prepared and ready. It was well decorated. There was no longer busy angels preparing things for the celebration of the Lamb's banquet, for everything was ready, and all the preparation is finished in the celestial world. The Lamb is about to receive his bride. The hall of the Lamb's banquet was very beautiful and resplendent. I saw thousands of chairs. I began to see the table that was very large. I saw the beginning but not the end of this table. The wedding hall was resplendent, beautiful, and well adorned. I don't have words, and I don't know how to describe the greatness of the Lamb's wedding hall. I saw in that moment, a very bright light that was around that place as if I was going to celebrate a wedding. I was in that place where words cannot explain to you. I began to observe how millions and millions of people were going to sit in that place before the Lord. They were chairs on one side and the other. The look of these chairs was like king's seats. Those chairs were also very beautiful because they were made by the hand of God, and they were made of sparkling pure gold like king's throne. It was a very beautiful moment. The table was already covered with bright tablecloths. I observed dishes, glasses, and fruits of the trees of the paradise. That's when the Lord began to talk to me in these terms, this is the place where I am going to receive my church. It's where my bride will be introduced to the Father. And here we are going to eat together. My bride will celebrate together with the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. I'm going to introduce my bride to my friend and my father. I'm going to say, Father, here is the bride, I went to die for her on the cross. That's when the Father is going to celebrate together with the saints, the beloved church for which I will soon grab from the earth. Look at each of those places where they are going to sit. I began to observe in the back of each chair names of servants of God of the earth and male and female servants who have already departed to be with the Lord. I saw the name of a shepherd who recently passed away here on earth and that name said, Jesus Aparicio. I saw his chair was very great very spacious. Then I saw chairs with the names, Ophelia, Holland Sosa, Santos Lopez. Then I saw other chairs with the name, Arnoldo Sandoval, and, Brenda Lizeth Sandoval. Then I started looking at other chairs where it was written names of family members. I told the Lord, I want to know where my seat is. I want you to show it to me. We started to move forward and behold, it's there. Quickly I went to read and it was written, Cesar Achilles Sandoval. These names are there simply to tell you and me to be firm and faithful before the Lord, we will see the reward of God. When I saw this special seat of mine full of beautiful gold, it was something spectacular. I wondered, Lord, I backslid and I went out of the way and became a hypocrite. You still have mercy and you have put my name on a special huge chair full of pure gold. You have given me a seat here. The Lord told me, my thoughts are not like your thoughts nor my ways like your ways. Great mercies are for those who are alive. Go to earth and tell them this truth. Tell my servants on the land, I am with them. Tell preachers not to stop preaching holiness. Tell evangelists to always go all over the place and urge them to always go to evangelize and tell the missionaries who go from place to place, I will be with them. Tell every minister in the mountains I am also with them because I am an omniscient God, I am everywhere. Nobody can fool me, nobody. Make no mistake, God can't be mocked. All that man ever sow, he will harvest. Tell the prophets that prophesy to say words according to the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Tell the ministers not to tire from going place to place to preach God's word. 
Tell the evangelists to continue speaking the truth. They must continue winning souls for me because there is a reward. Encourage pastors who are always there available for the congregation, because they are the heads of the congregation. I have put them there so that they would be in charge of each member. I kept observing more chairs with names. I observed different names of pastors and servants of the Lord. I saw another name, Ida Carrillo. In another chair was the name, Benjamin Solorzano. I saw different names, different surnames of shepherds of servants of the Lord of evangelists who were still on earth. I can't say all of them at this moment but I know that your name is there if you are faithful to the Lord. I began to observe the greatness of God in this giant place. Then the Lord said, I have something else to show you. Recently, a brother of mine in the flesh had married but his wife suffered a premature miscarriage. The Lord led me to a place where I could see many children playing. I saw that we were in front of a girl in paradise. I began to observe the very beautiful girl. She was holding the hand of another girl as they were playing in the paradise of God. Her hair was straight and reached below the waist. I observed her white dress, and she was very smiling. When she saw us, she started running and embraced us. She was at the same time smiling and grateful. Without anyone telling her we have come to visit, I began to observe that there were many games for children to have fun in this everlasting kingdom. There were kids having fun in that place of heaven, because there is no place for people to be sad. The Lord told me who she was. She was very loving, smiling, and he told me, this is the one that was going to be your brother's daughter. Go and tell your brother that his daughter is in a place full of joy. When we parted, the Lord said, I have given visions, revelations, and encounters to my people. They have wanted to stay when they came here, but I said no, because they have to go back to earth and tell everything they have seen here. I tell you, you can't stay in this place because you have to go and tell this message. What is hurting me is to see the indifference coming from my people. My word says, my people perish for lack of knowledge and this continues to affect my people. I have given you experience. My people are believing that they can come and tell me, Lord, give me experiences. They pray for that but not for holiness. They do not pray for my people or for my church. For the love for souls, I bless them more yet they do not pray to endure the test but they are coming to tell me, Father, I am presenting myself to you because I want a new experience. My people are indifferent. My people have changed and it is the same thing that happened to you but I do not want you to continue in this indifference. I do not want you to continue in that because look many souls are going to hell. They are going to hell because of the indifference of my people. The messenger and watchman must establish holiness. But many do not pray for my people. There is no love for lost souls. You are not interceding. The church is failing to pray in order to stand the test coming to this world. My people are indifferent, and my church has changed. And it's the same thing that happened to you. But I do not want you to continue in indifference. I do not want you to continue in hypocrisy. Just look how many souls are being lost. Many souls are going to hell because of the indifference of my people. I am the same as yesterday, today and will be the same for centuries of the centuries but the indifference of my people do not make me be with them. It does not make me go and heal the sick. It does not make me go and spill my anointing on my servants if my people on earth are going to the vanity of vanities. Tell my people to return to the ancient paths. Tell my people that my word is the ancient paths. Just because a person got an experience or a vision or a revelation does not mean they are saved. Because my word says that without holiness, no one will see me. It is true that an experience changes the life of man. It can also change him for bad when he says, I saw heaven and hell and I'm already saved, I have already arrived. The fact that I brought you to this place does not mean you are to be exalted. It means that you should humiliate yourself, you should look for me more, not get excited, as many have done and they want to become popular in the media. They have also changed because of being busy with technology and science that today is destruction on earth. They have toiled for many materials for they want to become great on earth, but they are not looking for me. They are looking for the vanity of vanities, like my word says, they love things of the world more than me. I have great things for you. However, the day that you stop preaching holiness, the day you stop preaching the truth and change my word to prosperity gospel that takes people to hell, that day, my anointing and my Holy Spirit will move from you. But as long as you preach the truth, 
holiness, and what is written in my word, I will be with you wherever you go. And I'll be with you wherever you are, and my spirit will be with you because I am holy and I will always be holy. These words resounded and resonated in me. I said, Lord, forgive me, Father, because I have failed. The Lord said, I only ask that you know how to examine your life. The Lord was merciful and gave me to perform an examination and assessment of my walk with Him. It is not easy for the same God that gave you the assignment to come and call you unworthy servant. He asked, What are you doing for me there on the earth? I thought I was worthy for the kingdom and that I have reached perfection. I did not need to go to church and pray and fast because I thought I was already done. Such a great mistake a man can commit here on earth. The Lord said, I will ask accounts from each one of you. You will have to give me an account, point by point for every single thing. If I gave gifts to each one of you, you all going to give an account of the gifts and talents I gave you. What did you do with that talent? Did you multiply it or not? Have you buried it? You will have to give an account. When I gave you the gift of ministry, you have to give an account of where did you go to preach the word of God. How many congregations did you establish for me? And if my spirit was there with you, you will have to give an account. And if you are an evangelist, how many souls have you won for me? And did you preach holiness? You will have to give an account about my anointing and my spirit that was in you. If it was the pastor's ministry that I gave you, you will have to give an account for each of your congregation. You will have to give an account of how many souls you went to visit. My word says, just as you did with those little ones, you also did it with me. You have to give an account when a soul goes astray and you went to visit him to ask him to go back to church because I want to save him. You're going to give me accounts for each member of your church and how you kept them in righteousness in the gospel or kept them out of the gospel. You will have to give account about your family. Do you pray for your family? My brothers, these words of the Lord was not easy. The Lord said, if you are a prophet, you will give an account for every prophetic word, whether it was according to your flesh or according to your mind. Managing gifts and talents are not easy. You have to care for them. You have to fast, you have to pray and seek the ancient paths of the Lord. The word of the Lord was so strong. It was something very tremendous to such extent that I was crying. I was just spilling my tears. And I said, Lord, forgive me. I have failed before you. I failed before my neighbor. The Lord began to cry. Tears fell from his face. I looked at his face because he was very bright. The Holy Spirit was together with him as the two cried and shed tears for the fate of humanity. Jesus said, I gave my life for humanity. But they have changed. With a voice of moans, he cried loudly for humanity and his church. He said, my church has changed and they still believe that they will come to be with me in eternity. It is not like that. No. The Lord was crying and he did not hold back the tears. No one will see me without holiness. But I stood up and said, thank you for giving me the opportunity. I'm going to reconsider now. I'm going to change now. I will serve you in spirit and in truth. This message is for the church. This message is for the redeemed in the blood of the Lamb of God. The Lord said, this is all you will say. I'm your faithful witness. I am the one that holds you by your right hand. Don't fear I'll help you. I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Look. This message is so strong that many critics will say things against you that many will be against you but while I'm not against you, you keep preaching the word as it is written. I will be with you and I will be your faithful helper but will my church that is redeemed by my blood believe right now? Jesus will demand accountability for the souls entrusted to our care. I want to tell you that I have been a little afraid to say all this because it's not easy.